Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Division B here at the CWL Pro League. Uh, Maven, I'm hosting today. Yes. I'm filling in for Katie Bedford. She's feeling a little bit under the weather, but we still got our regular crew on the desk. But before we get into talking about the matches for today, guys, I want to talk a little bit about what went down yesterday. E United were able to get a big win over 100 Thieves. Now, not to take any, anything away from E United, but Nameless, I'm going to ask you. Crowder said something to me today. He's like, I don't want to root for my team to lose, but in this spe specific spot, I was kind of hoping they'd lose to motivate yeah. us more. Do you agree with that? I agree with that. I mean, that, that's a fantastic coach right away, right there, because his team was scrimming, and, you know, sometimes you can complain and stuff, and after you win an event, you tend to get in this cruise control mode when it comes to the Pro League, so them losing can be a blessing in disguise. Now, United absolutely played a fantastic series, but going forward, this might make 100 Thieves even that much more dangerous, knowing that they have stuff to work on still going into the next event. It certainly could, but now on the e United side of things, study, you saw the interview with Clay afterwards talking about how big a, a series Prestini had. It was pretty spectacular, right? Yeah, watching that first hard point out of him, he had a 1.4, and then Simp had a 1.8. So whenever that was happening, it was absolute dominant performance out of United. The only one that was negative was Clayster on, on that first hard point. Then throughout the rest of the series, the S&D, it won 6-4, which is a dominant performance out of BZ and Clay. They both dropped yeah. the duo chopsticks, which is this <laughs> 11 bombs. They were absolutely going off, and then the control was absolutely just a smoke. The mess. blink of an eye. Yeah. He played amazing, and Pristini made that crazy play to pretty much close out that last round where he got behind them, and that's what you want out of him. If, you, if these guys were to take down 100 Thieves, which is what they did, they needed Pristini or Clay to step up. It's crazy that, that we're getting consistent performances out of Simp now, where to me, he's one of the glitches. That's what I like to call yeah, him. Hook's a glitch, Gunless is a glitch, Temp is a glitch. Simp is now, to me, a glitch. Every yeah, single map, he's going off, but yesterday we saw performances from the rest of the roster, and that's what they're going to need if they're going to win a championship. So I think when Cap left and Simp came in, there was maybe a question mark for us about, yes, we knew this team would be good, but could they actually be a championship caliber team? Could they win an event? And I think even after London, I wasn't quite convinced yet, but Pac, are you getting to that point? Do you think this is a team that can go in, drop first place? This is the best team that Clacer's had since FaZe and AW. Wow. I don't even think it's close. This is, this is the best player he's played with since Zuma and AW. They can win an event for sure now. And now they yeah. have that confidence because they beat 100 Thieves, a team that gives them problems on the regular. They already know they can beat Optic. The three favorites going into the next tournament are Optic, 100 Thieves, United. Yeah. Now they know yeah. they can beat both. And even before that match, I remember I got to the studio and Clayster was outside just hanging out, like listening to music in his zen, getting his zen on. <laughs> and he was like, they're so hard to beat. He's like, they rarely make mistakes. He's like, me or Pristini need to step up in this series for us to win. He's like, it's going to be very difficult. And I, I remember walking away from that discussion like, this is going to be tough, man. I, I, yeah. He looks a little worried. <laughs> and then they just 3-0 destroyed him. So I think United absolutely can win an event. Well, United get the big win, and that keeps them at first place atop the division. I want to take a look at those standings now as we get closer and closer to Anaheim. It is right around the corner. We just have a couple days left, and then focus will entirely shift to that. But as United is able to retain the top record, both of the wins coming over 100 Thieves, they're starting to firmly take control of the number one spot, but we still have a battle kind of around that midsection for the top four. I do want to take a look now at the schedule to kind of see how this is going to play out throughout the course of the day because we still got matches today, Wednesday, and Thursday. So we're going to kick things off with Denial Esports going up against Heretics, followed by Elevate E United, Enigma 600 Thieves, and Team Envy versus Splice. But first things first, let's focus on that first matchup. Denial going up against Heretics. I want to talk about the Denial side of it, Study. What are your thoughts? So Denial last week, the way that they ended their week with a 3-1 victory over Splice was beautiful. We saw players that were stepping up. They have three All-Stars on this team, and it definitely showed last week. Brack, Rated, and Alex were going absolutely unbelievable in that series. Alex 1.2 Two, rated 1.1 and Brack 1.5 throughout the entire series those three guys were doing basically everything that they needed to do and then you had the supporting cast out of Joe and Bance it was beautiful to see especially in both of those hard points they pulled out two hard points versus Splice and that's something that I really wasn't expecting well, Denial does seem to be a team on the rise, but they're going to be going up against the Spaniards and Heretics, a team that has been hit or miss as of late, but Nameless, certainly you got to think they have what it takes to take out Denial. I mean, yeah, I think going into this match, I probably favored Denial a little bit just because the turnaround they had towards the end of the week, but Heretics yesterday looked fantastic. They beat Elevate, a team that was undefeated last week, and they won two hard points. They had their role switch, and this guy in that game five was going absolutely off. He had like 14 and five or something like that, so they're having players step up when they need to, and they also beat Elevate on a frequency hard point. You got to give them some credit for that. Like coming into the series, map one, winning a hard point after you were one and eight previous to that, it's very impressive. Well, you hear kind of denial argument, the heretic side of things. For you, Pac-Man, where are you shifted? 
I think Heretic's gonna take it. Like they they looked horrible to start last week, but they started building that chemistry, getting stronger with with Method Six going back to that song. And then yesterday they won two hard points against a team that is pretty damn good at hard point. Beat them on their best one. I just think that they're too strong in the hard points if they continue with that momentum, and I think they'll take this series from denial. All right, well, gentlemen, thank you. That's enough of a breakdown. We recapped 100 Thieves versus E United, but up today, the first match, we've got denial up against Heretics. We'll get it over to our casters. We've got Big Ben and Crazy Chance. <laughs> thank you very much, man. You're crazy today. It's supposed to be a secret, Ben. Now people know. <sighs> now That's everyone, a problem. Now everyone knows. But uh, excited to get this day underway for Pro League matches. We have a couple of good ones back to back, and uh, the two games later on today, which I think uh, Maven and Joe are going to be covering very good as well. So a good day of Call of Duty Esports action here in Columbus, Ohio. But uh, the first one to start things off, I I'm curious to hear your thoughts here. Where, where are you sitting on the fence? Denial, Heretics, which way are you going? Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm leaning Heretics. I'm leaning the Vamos like, direction because they're one of the top eight team in the game, right? They've reached the top half. They've consistently been so for X number of weeks now or a couple months. And I have faith. I, I think up until yesterday, they had lost like their previous five series. So it was a bad stretch, but they got over the hump. You get a nice game five win. I think they'll be fine. You talk about the roll swaps all you want. I think they'll be fine, and I think the Niles, one of the better teams, it's slightly easier. You say that's slightly easier for them to go <laughs> against, and of course, the Nile has been on the come up the bounce back from London as well. Fierce competition in their own right. Yeah, I think Denial very uh, upset with how they performed at London, as were many of their fans, of course. Uh, but this a chance really for maybe Heretics, to your point, really prove themselves now. It's a tough game. By no means is it going to be an easy walk in the park, that's for sure. But you finally break your terrible run of form. You get a win under your belt. Game five, can you propel it? So maybe win one more in a row. Of course, uh, seeding for Anaheim going to be so, so important. At the end of this week, all things will be decided. We'll know our groups and our pools. So every win now counts as well as trying to secure that top four chance. That's what everyone's looking for. Top four guarantee your spot at playoffs. And Heretics is in a spot for the top four where they're fairly comfortable. Like they're in third right now. They got like two games up on Splice and Envy who are tied. Splice though, there. you know, they might be on the downturn, Ben, if you haven't paid <laughs> attention. So you're feeling a little bit comfortable there. And then Envy's a threat, but you're going to have to have another team step up before Heretics is really starting to get scared about losing their spot. And it would be key if they lose this one, oh, that yeah. might start downturn because you lose to those teams that are towards the bottom four because, well, Denial's a team trying to work their way towards the top. Right. I was going to say, this is one of those games where it might not be Denial themselves that were to kind of take that number three spot, but it would definitely be a big, big helping hand to the, those teams that are trying to do so. Obviously, you mentioned the Team Envious, who now seems many people's kind of favorites with everything that's been going on with, with Splice and whatnot. But that, of course, is your favorite if you count out Heretics, which I don't know if I'm willing to do just yet. But bad run of forms, they happen across all sports, all esports. It doesn't matter. Sometimes it just... It just doesn't go your way, right? They've turned things around at least with a win. They've broken the terrible run, but now again, it's about being consistent. A quick glance at our map set. Um, first game, gridlock, hard point. You fancy in Heretics still on this map particularly? I'm gonna be, as soon as you asked me who I favorite, Heretics jumped out my mind. And then the more I think, I was like, I don't, Denial, like, it, it gets closer. And I think Denial might actually be ferocious. And I think, you know, the guys the desk, or guys the desk talked about at least, like, Brack, I. I see no reason why he would slow down at all. He's been having some superstar performances. I think we could very well see another one here. Rex, an interesting player. Very interesting player. Since the start of the year, we've kind of highlighted him so, so much. And we said this guy can be potential MVP form. And he can reach that MVP form consistently. We saw it a little bit with this Denial squad. I'm curious to see if uh, potentially if Denial don't get things going for the rest of the week, if he's even still on that team. And I just remembered, with the screams in the background, why I'm favoring Heretics, <laughs> they got the passion, Ben. They get the passion, they get a clean down on the opening break of the hard point, and they start to get hyped already. And pretty much was the, the perfect break you'd have. Brack this time wins the gunfight, trying to work his way through showers. Contest is coming inside the hill. And it looks like they're not even going to break. They try to flank once again. Vance has to go all the way around. Metals is here for it. This is best case scenario or nearly for Heretics. As you can see, the back spawns eventually do come in for denial. But either way, it's going to be 40 some odd seconds just from the first hill for, well, the Vamos boys. Stands Method 6 looking potentially towards some streaks already. 250 what he needs. Rated is spot out medals. Methodic gets the call out. Challenges. Needs to clean up this kill. Not going to be able to do so. Bans comes to the assistance of his teammate. Now it's Lucky's turn. A simple trade there will deny him of any streaks. But still, Heretics with a nice, sizable lead. Now it's just about getting control of P2. 
you see the RK7 trying to put in work if at all possible. The Brack eventually gets cut down. You had Denial, who had the back spawns initially. They have not been able to get any time at all. They still can't have it. Super picking up a handful of kills with a pistol. Eventually, though, of course, one being his teammate, he still is not quite to the street territory yet. Needs at least one more kill. He hasn't found an EKI. He's tagging players up, but it comes down to the RK7 players right in front. He's doing the dance. If he can have it, he gets taken down in denial. Finally, a breath of life in the opening two hills. Now, Leon, that's three players from Heretics close to streaks. Three failed to get them. Now the rotation over towards Tree. Well, don't hold your breath if you're a Denial fan because Heretics are ready and waiting. Three players already in there. That's number seven, eight, and nine. Sukri, Journey, and Metals ready to try and take the fight. But Vance could be a playmaker here for Denial as he waits patiently. Teammate in support. Pinch could come through, but Joe on the other side will fall. Now it looks like it's just going to have to be a five hit through the front door. And Benz is waiting for his teammates here. 335. He might even be thinking about streaks to bait his teammates. And while well, they're going in first, they're going to be the entry men looking for some kills for the cleanup. Sukri again with the RK7. He's got a handful of kills with the weapon. The baits do not pan out. And Heretics, well, they just thrive and come out on top. We had that conversation last week. You could run around with that thing if you wanted to and try and make it a primary. If you uh, stack it out, it's very, very powerful secondary. And obviously, you can tell him just by the kill feed. He's making it work himself. Finally, Denial breakthrough into tree though. 20 seconds left. How long will they be able to hold? A team kill comes through, and that's that. Surely the break. Metals are shooting like that. Denial don't have much chance of locking down tree. Seven seconds left, and again, Metals thinking towards some streaks here, Chance. And this is best case scenario. Even if the streaks falter, which clearly he does not care a ton about them, because he's just going to fly out for the, the kills, but you don't need them. You get the complete wipe over by a tree. Journey, of course, might even be thinking about streaks of his own. More importantly, you're in the hill. Everyone is going to be oh, forced up no. to come sushi side. Metals is getting kills like that. You got a 60-point lead. You're in control. Journey, well, he had the mid-map cut off. He's going to fall, but Lucky's up top waiting for the players to get here, and they show up and beat him down. Alex with the very fast shot punch. As it stands, though, Heretics have ticked over the 100-point mark, 101 to 34. The current lead, 30 seconds left on the final hill of the first rotation, and Heretics do have a good spawn here, a chance to try and break through. As Journey looking back alley the one to pinch through the front door. Not going to happen. Sukri with the trusty RK out. Looking to find a little more. Two more players, though, inside for Denial. I think you're going to have to chalk it. And this this right here, this moment in the game, is why those streaks would have been so important for Heretics. It would have allowed them to push one extra time, play for that scrap, and then, of course, just streak off Denial from the new hill from P1. We know how valuable streaks can be on this map. Well, at the same time, streaks or no streaks, the first time around they got 40-some-odd points. And, well, it was mainly because of the opening break, but it takes them half a second for them to pick up those two kills. They get inside, and just like that, the first hill dominance is continuing for Heretics. It's now 50 points on the hill. I think Denial only scored, like, three yeah. right off the opening break, if even that. You got kills getting traded back and forth like crazy. It does look like Denial is able to break through and secure. Well, with 30 seconds left, they're not in a bad spot for the next till either. I'm going to say, you, you say secure, but hold on a minute, because Metals break straight through, double with the craft slam. There's three. Beautiful stuff from him. And again, starting to work towards some form of streaks. 15 seconds left. It's a foot race on rotation. One player at the back simply cannot die, but it was Brack. And you hear the Spaniards getting loud. They know the importance of that kill, locking down the spawns. And well, now, if you're denial, you're spawning so, so far out. And it's just been a, a, a slave fest, right? I think if you do the, the cross comparison, Heretics, they're up on maybe 10 kills, just about. Sugary plus four, Metals up plus eight, and Lucky plus five. So they're feeling themselves right now. This is player number six, effectively, that is getting close to the score streaks. Of course, Heretics are trying to just secure the hill. Looks like Denial is able to break through the back spawn. So, Metals, now the question is, how hard do you want to play for the streaks, or do you just play for the hill time? He goes straight in the hill. He picks up one kill. I'm not sure if it's enough. Yep. I think he just was able to secure the lightning before getting shut down. I mean, all is said and done, Heretics, again, streaks or no streaks, they try to pour on the pressure. Denial breaks through, but it seems like it's just a, a little bit too late on this hill. And that was a, a little unfortunate. Because Heretics had a... Pretty interesting setup. They spread so far, forcing now spawn so far out. But unfortunately, just couldn't control it as well as they would have liked to. Being themselves uh, a little taken aback by the fact that now took so long to wrap. Of course, you do earn the lightning strike from Metal Shoes, currently 20 and 12. But the lead, probably not as big as they would have liked it, given uh, how this game has gone so far. Tempest is out for Sukri. 
Just we'll try and hit a couple of shots as once again. It's Heretics controlling tree. Yeah, he's got the tack or the the bonus health as well. Doesn't make a difference to the wall. Rated can feel it. And you can see in denial, first two kills, they take out a one, but now they got to deal with the war machine as well. It's able to find two. No idea if those players had flak, but now Lucky just surges on through, finds another big two kills. And again, the slaying power from Heretics right now, it just seems overwhelming. It is overwhelming, Chess. I'm going to be honest with you. And the team shots, everything going their way. Lucky 175, he will surely fall with three players pushing. In fact, no, he's actually done a phenomenal job of just staying alive and his teammates just cleaning up everything. A quick glance at your stats is Denal still yet to find three digits in terms of points. Method 6, 13 and 15. Journey's 15 and 15. Sucre's 11 and 11. And then it's the last two. Metal's 21 and 13. And Lucky at 22 and 11 playing so well. Speaking of Lucky, almost gets himself a lightning for his efforts. Not going to be able to do so, but for now at least on the rotation, Heretics are in the hill. Oh, they're in the hill. Denial's actually doing a really nice job to try to force it through the back, and it looks like they get that nice clean five down. They alleviate the pressure around house, and now the players just have to come in the front. You can see Brack, he cares a lot about trying to hold on, pulls out the war machine just to keep the defensive hold on the hill, and he just gets taken down. He's only able to find one kill, but granted, you still have quite a bit of control in and around house, but you pretty much need the full 60, because again, Metals does have that lightning for next. That's going to be so important. It's the point I made after the first rotation of hills. And it's now very, very likely for Heretics. They can push this late as many times as they want. Rely on that lightning strike to clean out P2. Or P1, I should say. Gives you a really, really simple rotation. But Metal is actually already there. And he's saying, well, I'll take these fights myself. I don't even want to use it. Unfortunately for him, teammate does kill him. And well, now off spawn, well, we see it. They're now hesitant. They know it's there. They know he has it. It's just when does he want to invest it? Imagine in the next couple seconds, it's 224 for Heretics. You need 26 and the game is yours. Lightning Strike is going to kill at least one. Does find Bracket forces two players basically to their death. Fans trying to make the big play to get over top. Sukri is there to cut him down. 20 seconds and game number one goes the way of the Spanish. And Methodsik is on the flank. He's got to go fast though. Metals inside the hill. Maybe he just doesn't need that help. A kill feed again. Heretics on this first hill. It has just been perfect from the start to finish. The Tempest doesn't make a difference because you got to get to the hill. And deny it. Well, no one's close yet. You get one more crack at it, and even then you're down by 100 points. And that is Heretics with a dominating game number one. Going to put it better myself, Chance. A very, very good map one from the Spanish. Just came out and made a serious point there against Denial in game one. Start off, and you're thinking, all right, well, that was an impressive first hill. <laughs> it was probably not going to stay like that. No, no, it, it, it stayed like that. That could have been a lot, lot worse as well, which I think is a really scary thing there for Denial. They did well to shut down as many streets as they did. About seven times. Yeah, about seven probably is, uh, is accurate. There was a lot of chances there where, honestly, Heretics could have earned themselves more streaks and really spiraled that game out of control. Would have had streaks for fun. Uh, but overall, very, very good game one from them. They just didn't need it. It was just dominating. I'm trying to think the only rotation that Denial, maybe you could say one, was like to the house at the very end, but they weren't even there first. It took right. them 15 seconds before they get the break. Other than that, they had just gotten uh, obliterated on every single hill, every single rotation. Denial had a little bit of fight in them, but definitely not a ton. Medals and Lucky just trying to remind everyone exactly why uh, you shouldn't underestimate them. Come. Anaheim. This is a team which has been consistently improving at open events. London, one of their best. And honestly, they are a team that on their best day could cause upsets, that's for sure. And this was a absolute clinic on how to play gridlock hardpoint. It is like the, the next sec for them, right? Because I, I think at the last open event, they had a great Friday, a great Saturday, and then they got double 3 0 on Sunday. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they have taken series off of the best teams in the game before. It's just a matter of doing it at the tournament. So it's the next logical step for them. So in this series here, of course, they're just looking to make the, the quickest 3 0 that they could possibly get. And then, uh, of course, post that, they are thinking long term because outside of a dire sort of falter, they'll be good to go. Well, we'll set over to Jess to hear what the players said before the game. 
things. That's right, I just speak with Journey, and uh, he shared with me that their success yesterday was pretty much all attributable to the team vibes. I asked him to kind of further clarify what happened over the weekend, and he said, well, it wasn't even a matter of playing. We just hung out a lot and kind of bonded as a team that really helped with our vibes, and that made all the difference. Here in this series versus Denial, he said we match up really well against them because they're a really aggressive team, but so are we, so we can meet that, and uh, <laughs> we, we've seen that is definitely the case so far. Now, from Denial, I caught up with Rated, and he actually disagreed. He said, that he's definitely not expecting an easy win, but he said heretics have one way of playing and they don't have a plan B if, if that doesn't go well. They're really aggressive, but that's all they know. We can adapt mid-game and we just don't think they can. So he definitely feels that they have the upper hand, but we'll see what happens with the rest of the series. Ben and Chance, back over to you guys. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jess. <laughs> As it stands, heretics up 1-0 in the series. And honestly, look, looking at you know how they perform there in game one, Rated obviously mentioning, well, heretics have one play style, right? And if it doesn't work, it tends to just go, go wrong easy to counter. It worked. It worked very, very, very well in game one. And now you look at the search and destroy as a chance for Denial to bounce back. Of course, pretty stressful time for, for the Denial players for obvious reasons. But here's a look at the rest of that series. An Arsenal search and destroy followed by an Arsenal control. And then two Hacienda's to close out four and five. Should we go the distance? I never actually asked you how far you saw the series going. Uh, obviously, I, I think you may have been thinking, what, 3-1? Were you around that ballpark? Because I don't think this is game five material, personally. Well, I, one of the things Paradox said to me, like, first thing when we got into, like, the venue today, was like, I, I don't think there's going to be any 3-0s today. Like, I think all of these are going to be close. And my immediate reaction was, I don't know about that. <laughs> I, I think we might have, like, one that creeps in. And I'm not saying that this is the series. But, Ben, I think this might be the series. Okay. You're just going to... Actually, no, I don't it. think so. I, I, don't th I think he's right. I, I think 3-1 at worst and possibly a game five is my honest answer. One thing to note here is the sniping frenzy that you'll see on Arsenal Search and Destroy from Heretics. They are so good, normally so consistent. Alex, I wouldn't go there again if I was you for the rest of this map because, look, he may miss once, but he isn't the type of player to miss a very simple shot like that many times. Trades come through as I try and give Lucky the, the Vamos. He's missed three, and now all of a sudden, it's a 4v2 in favor of Denal. It's actually a really nice play for them as well. Lucky might get overwhelmed. He's just going to back up, but Denial just makes a great play. No one came back to the spot. Bantz is out now. Instead, they come from elevators, and that's a shot Lucky can't really hit because all of his teammates are basically just in front of him. And then Brack played aggressive to go and take the guy out on bomb. So great start. Now you just have to close the round out in a 4v2. And I would imagine that starts very quickly. Method Sick doesn't check the corner, and that is an RK7 against the Brack. And Brack comes out on top. He got three kills that round. Go round from him. Of course, a player whose stock just keeps going up and up and up. Seems like ever since the start of the year. So here's a quick glance. Breck with the first. Slides across. And there's lucky number two. And as you said, three for him in that round. Now for Denial, they go back onto the attack. Curious to see what they bring to the table here. Whether it's either going to be an A or a B hit. Straight up the rip. I think you have to. You do have to give the respect to the heretic snipers. I, I really, really think you do. They can be so, so good in this. You know, often they go for maybe more than one at a time. Hands can snipe too, though. Yes, you can. Unfortunate hit marker. I think just clipped them through the barrel or to the side or whatever that thing is called. But at least forces the players to back down. But at the same time, the the jig is up. Lucky's made it back with the sniper, so you get the tried and true sniper battle. Unless, okay, Journey just goes and treads Bance. There is no sniper battle. Journey first blood. Impressive quick peek. Not able to trade because you know Lucky's going to be at the back. Try and go for a little bit of a bait. Force Lucky to change position and then maybe go for a child from distance, but won't be the case. Instead, it's going to be mid map. Metal says three. Takes care of one. Does wonderfully well to stay alive, but maybe a little greedy there for number two. That teammate's coming. We're flying towards him, but. Premature with the challenge, and now all of a sudden, Denial have done well themselves to just make this a two versus two. 25 seconds left. Yeah, I'm not sure what Spanish for ego chal is, but that is <laughs> definitely a, a solid example of it. But all said and done, Lucky's still alive, and when he is, he can find some kills. He's expecting Rated to get aggressive. Of course, if you know Rated, you expect the pre aim, which is exactly what's happening. Now, I might fly over to find him, but six seconds left, he can't plant. Sukri just runs away, plays his life, and that is round secured for Heretics. Yep, waited not enough time to close out that round. A little unfortunate, but Heretics will take it, no doubt. Tie things up. 1-1. One, one.
stunned it. He had him stunned hard in here, and then just, he just went for it. Two players there. He knew both were stunned, and maybe he was hoping the pressure from the back from Journey would help, but that is that is definitely an ego shot. But either way, he does take down one before it happens, and the worst-case scenario for that challenge is, oh, they're going to end up in a t or three versus three, then a two versus two, and we still have Lucky alive, so it'll be okay. They'll shoot someone eventually. <laughs> Finally hit something, which he was able to do. Of course, in the last round, we'll see Lucky off the rip. He's going to be making his way over towards B. And Baz will have uh, free aim over towards A. Methodic does have bomb. Bear that in mind. Number two on the minimap. And it looks as if Heretics might be trying to bait out a B push here. Now, Rated is going to spot them cross. And this could be beautifully done because you see number nine, Baz, already pulling away. However, Joe, number seven, is still lingering around. He isn't convinced just yet. Now, if he does move, maybe it's a chance for Methodic. The problem is, if you're Heretics, you can get control of B, but you can't do anything with it because there's still players over towards A. Methodic can make the move, but actually, it looks like they're making the read. They can, like, feel the pressure, yeah. but I don't think they've seen it yet. I hear calls from Methodic, so I think players did spot each other, and you can see the errors on the map. Basically, everyone rotating over towards A. That's so impressive from Danel, not to just take that bait. So, stay, be patient until they have absolute certainty of the information. But now look at Heretics. They say 30 seconds left on our bikes. We'll rotate over towards B, and we'll leave all four Denial players lingering over towards A. It's going to be Brack who's first to the party defensively. There's two players. Doesn't have the nade to use, though. They just have to try and slide out, and well, when you're as good as that, <laughs> it makes retaking very easy. That is just expertly read by Denial. They, I, I, Lucky took a couple pop shots towards the end over towards A to try to keep the bait. Journey finds a kill. You're not going to get it. Journey last man standing. The round's going to end. Lucky took a couple pop shots over there to say, like, hey, guys, we're totally still here. We're definitely coming to A. And Denial had none of it. They were like, okay, no one's pushed up the bomb. They haven't made a move. Send everyone back. And then, of course, Alex and Brack, you see working in the tandem. You get the bait and switch, which... Turns out, wasn't even really needed. Effectively, just a, the double challenge coming in. But just free kills for them towards the end. And again, I think this is not two rounds in a row, but two rounds were denial. Just coming through elevators, the overwhelming pressure, shutting that push down. Yeah, really well-read round there from denial. The fact that they didn't take the, the, the bait early, they didn't bite at all. They didn't see anything. Because Methodic was so, so deep. There's no way they could. They just had that kind of natural instinct that, well, hold on. Let's just give it an extra few seconds. And it works out perfectly, not just once, but twice in the round. And, well, because of that, now 2 1 up. I think it might be midnight that just they just fly through. Like, so many teams will go to one bomb site or the other, and they never really go too deep in, like, the defensive side spawn when you're on offense to, like, play for kills. But I want to say midnight's done that in the past. But otherwise, it's not. You see teams make these reads all the time where they get baited out. It's fairly simple stuff. Bantz this time wins the sniper battle. So now just making solid calls. This time, first blood in their favor. We'll see if they can convert. So tough to retake 5v4, and Bantz is going to make it borderline impossible. 4v3. He has a teammate watching the flank. Alex cleans up Journey, who was the player on the flank, and now all you really need to worry about is uh, what's in front of you. You also need to worry about maybe a player being on the bomb and Metals was close, yet so far, Method 6 for a 1v2. Has already found two players this round, but with 19 seconds left, should surely be no chance whatsoever. It's actually fairly impressive. They got as close as they were. Method 6 is, I mean, basically can see through walls if he was there a half second sooner. Maybe can protect his teammate, but the fact that it was halfway through the defense that's that's as well as a little like, uh, guys? <laughs> they took an impossible situation and made it interesting, but either way, you, you take a round on Arsenal where the sniper gets two picks in a row effectively, and you just win those rounds, and well, Bance did the job. Uh, two good snipes. Well, so one unlucky. We're sniping on stairs, and the second, an impressive shot back stairs. So, good round. Advance overall. 3 1, the denial lead. And Alex himself getting close to streaks. 150, all he needs. And Heretics again on offense a couple times. They they favor or have favored at least the B site and no success. Elevators pressure's been too much this time. Just surging forward. Bant has one angle covered. Everyone else can just fly up the right side. And now Lucky, well, he can spot the information. They're everywhere. Suker can find a pick, but you're still at man disadvantage. That's someone working towards streaks. That's Lucky's going to fall. And all of a sudden, Suker eat last man standing. He did well to shut down Brack, though, so it makes it not impossible. 
tough. The worst thing here would be if Sakuri actually planted the bomb and followed to lose the round. Do not want to free or, or give away any free points to Alex. Of course, he is still on that streak. 150, what he needs. Sakuri finds that kill first. Maybe it's possible. He's the player spotted. Good read from Sakuri. BK comes through. Alex, one step closer. That's best case scenario. It, it seemed like he was expecting Joe to just challenge from the heady, so he kept going for the pre-fire, and Joe's like, nah, I'm not getting this kill. It, it needs to be my teammate, and eventually he just went out to, well, bait for his teammate and essentially worked perfectly at the end. This is, of course, a round where we have seen multiple times on defense. Denial pulls it off because of the pressure they pour through elevators. This time, they completely flip the switch and pour the pressure on the other side of the map and just overwhelm the opponent. Strats, Ben. Strats. <laughs> Love to see. Four-one denial. Alex with the lightning. Seventy-five more points for the Hellstorm, and just the lightning is in itself on this map so so powerful. You get clearance over to the B site. You know Sugar's in the back. You ping the lightning. You back him down. You get the bomb plant. Then you back up, play your life, and you call in the lightning strike for this cure later in the round. Or. You don't ping the lightning. You just get the bomb down for free, and then you get the ping and everything later on. You see Journey is going to be working through elevators to find a pick. Raided is going to fall, but his job is done. He has the bomb down. Alex pulls it in straight away. I don't know what he can find. Bance is able to pick up a kill, but so does Metals. He does earn the Hellstorm, actually. Blucky's hot bomb. This is chaos. As long as Alex stays alive, though, you have to worry about the streaks. There are those streaks. Just the hit marker, 2v2. Lucky just got some terrible timing. He will surely die. 1v1, 15 seconds. Is he on the bomb, Alex? You gotta make your decision. 12 seconds. Said now. Not Sukri. Couldn't be. 5 1 now, the now. And Ben, if I did my math right, Sukri could have had that. I think if he stuck bomb. He picked it up at like 14 and a half, and he came for the check right at like 8 seconds. So it would have been down to the wire on the timing, but either way, Sukri just felt, well, eventually he's going to challenge. I can't hop it. It's a play that doesn't work, and it makes perfect sense. And that is round where you burn the lightning to pick up a kill, to earn the Hellstorm, to use the Hellstorm to really kill no one, but I guess force a handful of bad gunfights, and you burn a lot of time off the clock. So maybe not perfectly executed, but executed nonetheless. Hey, it's a win, right? <laughs> They're a 5-1. Like, yeah, they'll be fine. Yeah, they'll be A-OK, -okay, I think. And the Hellstorm just a added bonus to how well they performed so far. Alex nine and two, Brack not far off at eight and four. Dominant game two from them. I was about to say Brax even got a higher score, just a little bit closer to that war machine. But this time the B pushed. So much times, or so many times, the pressure through elevators has been there. This time Heretic's actually flying through. Lucky first blood, looking for the next. Just needs to stay alive. They get the bomb down. They can back down if they want, but they don't need to. Guns a blazing. Remember that time we talked about not a lot of teams push through spawns? Well, Heretics, they try it on for size. They kill everyone. No one dies. And what a round. And you, and you saw there, Lucky had that moment after he found the sniper. He was like, oh, we can just back away and play. And they were like, well, we have three people here. Let's just force the fights. Then they fly forward. EKA is all there. And you see Journey and Lucky essentially holding hands. And Journey closes out the final kill of the round. Spies with just five health. It was a 5-1 lead for now. Wasn't it Heretics yesterday that blew a 5-1 lead against Elevate? It was something in that ballpark. And I think from map 5, they went up 5-1 again. And Mama Mile was like, oh. Here we go again. And then it didn't happen in Heretics 1. So, you know, <laughs> they don't always happen. Can they do a 5-1 comeback, though? Heretics split the map. They were expecting mid-map pressure. It never came. Vance was very accurate last time he was in this spot. That sniper, he's only two and five though. First blood for medals. He's traded out. Still looking for Bans to try and find an opening. Just swing this fight back in your favor, but the players are all falling. Bans took too long. The bait was there. Brack, 1v4. Well, if there's anyone that can do it, I don't honestly think anyone could. It's a 1v4 and well, the bomb is down in the worst spot possible. It's completely cornered. 
Yeah, you're gonna get challenged from every direction. As soon as you get the kill, <laughs> and the trade is instant. So yeah, it is a hopeless <laughs> situation for Brack. However, he played it well, but however, he did get a kill, and he's only like two kills off the war machine. So I'm not mad at him at all for not just jumping off the map. That specialist progression, pro wow, progression. That's a tough word to say, apparently. It doesn't come in very often, but occasionally you'll see him in search, and he is well on his way. Of course, they don't want to earn it. They just want to, you know, win this next round and win the game. But should things get spicy, him and Alex are knocking on the door. Unless he gets completely shut down. The flip side of that, of course, is Journey's now 150 away from streaks. So we'll see if maybe it was uh, a good or bad decision or if it has any effect whatsoever. 5-3. One thing's for sure, a Heretic's round win here definitely makes things spicy as Lucky is searching. DKAs would be perfect. Lucky shuts down Bance. Advantage Heretic's in the round. Journey just wants the kill. Has to be careful of Vent though. Oh, didn't check it. Joe shuts him down and three players drop. Now, Denial, no. Lucky has that sniper rifle. He tries to run away. He's fallen. Sucker, on the flank. 1v3. No chance in hell. I thought they knew. By the way, War Machine apparently came out for the other side. I thought they knew there was a man in vents, but they fly past and they get punished for it. Maybe if Method Sick can find the kill on the guy and lobby, things go different. But either way, deny with the bounce back. No 3-0 so far, Ben. <laughs> As predicted, this is going to at least a game four. Two maps in. Let's not celebrate that one just yet. Still plenty of Call to the action for the rest of the day. Heretic started off so strong in game one. The half point gridlock. It was dominant performance from start to finish. And of course, now fight back in game two. We'll be back after this with Control. The Call of Duty World League is brought to you by Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel, the official beverage of the CWL. Scuff Gaming, the official controller of the CWL. And TCL, America's fastest growing TV brand.
Level up the game. Denial Heretics tied up 1-1 first game of the day. It was Denial that took the hard point. Or sorry, it was Heretics who took there. the hard point. <laughs> it was Denial who took the search and destroy for a moment there. I was thinking maybe Heretics could make the comeback in the search. Didn't happen. Denial close it out. Now we're tied. 1-1. We move over to control. Who's your money on? So this is interesting. This is something Pac-Man pointed out. We knew the storyline for Denial. I think they even came out and said they were like, before London or like prior, like we didn't even scrim control and they did not look great on it. I think the first control win they got was against 100 Thieves. Hmm. So who do I have in the series? I'm expecting Heretics, but at the same time, like Arsenal Control, the old Red Reserve squad, they were fairly solid at the Arsenal Control. It was one of their better control maps. It definitely wasn't good luck because they had a, a number of collapses on there, but sure. they've been solid in the past. Obviously, it's a 40% new team, so it's going to be a little bit different, and I'm definitely leaning Heretics, but not to the degree that the map record would show. Fair. Obviously, we're so far in the life cycle of the game at this point, so I'm just curious to, to get your thoughts on this. For Arsenal Control, when you're on the attacking side, is there a preferred kind of site that you yourself like to go for? Is it just get A control and then play for B? Or do you like to maybe go for a little switcheroo every now and then to hit B? I mean, it comes down to playing off the opponent. If you had free pickings, you want to get as much progression at B first, just because it's a little bit more difficult to get. But you're playing off what you expect the opposition to do. You're playing off what guns you want to start off with. And it looks like denial off the rip. They showed B for a moment. They flip flop. They go over towards A. And well, it doesn't look like it panned out too well for them. They all died. And now Heretics has a fair bit of map control. I was going to say, of all the strategies I expected you to say, that what they did, definitely uh, not one we've seen before. I will say a commitment to one or the other is usually good. <laughs> I mean, of course, you can go for some sort of strat, play off the information, but in this specific case, it did not pan out. Didn't work all medals now. Flat. Jesus. Excuse me? <laughs> oh, He's got, got super long arms, Ben. It's what, Mr. Mr. Elastic? Or what was that? Mr. Fantastic. Was it Mr. Fantastic? It's Elastigirl. Elastigirl. Mr. Sorry, there you go. See? That's what that looked like. Arm is flying through the vent. Trying to say Metals is Elastigirl? Yes. Actually, I am. It's got that nice southern accent. <laughs> As it's tense. Heretics up four lives. Looks like Methasic is going to be taken care of, but here comes Sukri with the damn RK. If I'm to hell, I'm getting so upset by that just because of the sheer amount of times he's actually killed. He may have more pistol kills than ICR kills at this rate. Uh, definitely not, but I, I don't know, man. he has quite a few. He's got like four or five at this point. Either way, see, four seconds off the clock. It is one dire attempt to get it. Metals, though, just shreds for two. Everyone's flooding in front. Brack finds two of his own, and the body stacks don't matter. Lucky can't finish the kill. Down but not out, Ben. Point two on the clock. Yeah, they have to keep a body in the hill forever. You just have to find someone in that situation. Don't try and go for the multiple. Just find at least the first kill. 250 away from Shrooks is Brack. Here comes the push. There's a lightning. Uh-oh, Heretics. Not like that. 0.2 seconds. And Brack is now not missing. Method 6 is dead as well. Full streaks for Brack. Two life advantage. Oh, how things just changed. And if Lucky had found just a single kill when they were three stacked in front of him, it would have been different. Heretics were forced to try to set up a play to make the break unsuccessful. And this is turned from bad to worse. The, the streaks are there. And the round, maybe not as much. Alex finds two, but the kills are back and forth. Vance still looking for streaks of his own. Shoots everything. Super kill with the pistol. The second team kill he's gotten with the RK7. 50 seconds left. 8-8. Eight, eight. Tied up. Three plays from Heretics go down. That's the opening you need. That's the opening that Denal will take. Round number one should be over. Barring an absolute miracle. With all the players stacking inside. Good luck, have fun. There's a nade just in case, says Alex. It causes the destruction. They were heavily down. 0.2 seconds away from losing round one. And Denal, clutch up and win. And in my mind, when there was like four seconds off the clock, I was like, all right, like, you know, then I can still do this, not a problem. Metals picked up that two piece, and I was like, this round's over. This is a horrible start for Denial. The control woes might continue. And then Brax showed up. And then obviously, there is the triple challenge again. Lucky just probably did 100 damage a piece to all three players, but couldn't quite find the kill. And just like that, you give away full streaks. The round just completely collapses. And Full streaks defensively are just so helpful, right? Oh, let's just stack A. They go B, they die. Simple as that. 
And Alex close to streaks as well. Now we got batting odds on whether or not Method Sick will earn the vision pulse. Not a lot of points earned in round <laughs> one. What would you give his odds right now? Uh, 30%. 30%, that's generous. And honestly, after that opening break, like 25%. <laughs> this could be a relatively quick game of control if it stays at this pace. Alex just 50 points away. Made available. Well, did you spot it? Well, you spotted him for sure. Lucky, stay alive. Sucre, stay alive. Did not get caught there. Even the EKA would have been enough. Oh, Ginobili. Oh, okay. Well, that works too, I guess, right? Just launch out the nade. There's two more streaks. So four streaks available for now. 35 seconds left. Zero progression in either A or B. And Joe is... Uh, that was impressive shots. Impressive shots from him. First line of defense. He's already found two. Just being annoying. Not the greatest nade of all time. And seems like the now have pretty much everything covered. Brax sniffs out one player over towards the back. The pinch is going to come through. He still knows he's going to be back there. But you have so many streaks to deal with it. Yeah, I'm about down to maybe 5 or 10% on really either player earning the Vision Pulse because this game looks like it's going to be over fairly quickly. That is another basically clean wipe in favor of Denial. That is the worst thing when you're on offense and you lose a round and you still have 15 lives on board. Because that just means that you got basically spawn trapped and any time you have map control, you get eviscerated and you're back to like point A. And you just never stop the clock. You never make it difficult. You never make you never anything happen. And yeah. that was nearly a quad nade, but we <laughs> reserve those for gunless. Apparently so. Alex was able to find two and of course got the streaks as well. Overall, a very well worked round from Denali. Gives him a 2 0 advantage. Method Sick was able to uh, find two kills last round. So, bumps his tally up to three. Likelihood of the vision pulse. Percentage probably almost uh, down to single digits at this point because War Machine is out for Brack. They want to push out towards B off the rip. And I don't think Heretics would have expected that. It's almost a little bit of a bait. You would traditionally leave that because you have the streaks. Instead, they say, no, let's at least put some pressure down early. See if we can try and close this out here and now. Well, the only thing they really had to watch right there was Vance and just no one kept an eye on it. So the communication or maybe the situation denial hadn't quite figured out the, the setup that they needed. And Heretics is able to break through. So. You burn the war machine and you get a nice little life advantage, feeling pretty good. You find another two kills, so heretics definitely have a little bit of fight in them. The problem is denial, if they want to, you have three streaks. You can say this round doesn't matter too much to us because you'll never cap B on offense. Hit your eyes on number five. That's Brack. He was stationary for quite some time. Not sure if that was a ping. It didn't necessarily look like it based on the fact that no one... Actually, it could have been because the player from heretics did go over towards Vets and he's been... Red and taken care of. 27 seconds left. Harris is in a good spot to win this round. And if I'm Denial right here, again, I'm sinking three streaks. They can't cap beyond offense. Just don't touch the hill. Find some kills if you can get them, but I personally wouldn't even try to win the round. I would just trust it on defense. I wouldn't want them to build towards their specialist progression. I would just play patient. Like I, The hard work is done, but maybe you want to take one crack at it. You fly through the window. Try to force it through. 4.4 on the clock and well, they're able to stop it. <laughs> Joe just turned to Burns. 2.1. Hey, it was 0.4, so they give themselves a little bit of extra breathing room here in round number three. First tick in. Of course, they cap A. Heretics is in a whole world of pain. They have one chance to fully break. Comes down to the following kills. Rack wins his engagement. Hill contested. You don't have long to give away here. If you are denial, three kills come through. No one else is really in a position to make anything happen. Heretics hold defensively. And I'll say, now that I've had more than a half second to think about it, it'd be ridiculous to not try to win the round. You have no reason not to. I'm just saying they're in such a good position that, like, you don't have to burn any of the streaks. You don't have to force it through unless you get an amazing opportunity to because of how great of a spot you'll be on defense. Now, that, of course, means you need to have at least a halfway decent opening break because if Heretics just get a clean five wipe, yeah. then things become more problematic than they need to be. So pressure still on denial. Yeah, you have to execute. Just don't waste your streaks. But That's... they had three streaks and you have to cap B on offense. Like that is such a huge problem. As long as you don't waste your streaks. True. As long as you're, as long as you're patient with them and effective with them. This should effectively be over. Anyone close to their specialist? Well, Mads has grass slam as well, so if it wasn't bad. <laughs> well, they they could have been worse. 
finds the pick. Sarku with two. Not the greatest opening you've ever seen from Denial. But Alex will at least shut down two of himself. So at least one tick should come into A. Honestly, maybe even more. We'll, we'll see what Denial's game plan is here. Do they just want to chalk up A completely? Give it up. Two players making their way over towards window. There's the first lightning. Brack has found one, but the second tick actually might still come through. It did. Denial will break, but at the cost of one of their three streaks. And that's perfectly fine. You got a nice little life advantage. You, you shut something down, and of course, you, you still have the extra streaks on board. And maybe a couple specialists to boot, of course, on the flip side. Journey and Metals each have their specialists as well, but the burden is on them to make big plays and medals with gunfights like that. Trying to get the start, and the Hellstorm might be dedicated to him. He gets found out, but at the same time, for Heretics, take that. You do burn another streak. You will take that gladly. And that was so smart for Metals just to recognize, well, the Hellstorm's coming. Let me force it. So if he does try and kill me, he'll at least team kill. You cannot allow Alex to get a double, though, from window. Three more players go down. Again, pressure in A. 36 seconds on the clock. You cap this. You get the extra minute. And just one streak left. This should have been impossible. Heretics have given themselves a chance. Bats with a grab slam flies in. He only finds one, but it's his teammate's nade that shuts him down. So all that for maybe nothing. We'll see. One thing's for sure, though. You have to bait out that lightning as soon as you can. And Heretics, while well, outside of the streaks, they have played around that grab slam very, very well. Of course, their work not cut out for them yet because that is four down and that is about worst case scenario. Now you're stuck in your spawn. Keep in mind, last time Heretics was on offense, they lost the round with 15 lives still on board. They got a minute this time to make something happen towards B. But again, that lightning strike still in the back pocket of Alex. You have so much map pressure and control from Denial. You got Brax. Well, he's feasting. Alex is right there with them. He finds another two. 16 v 7. Ben, this game has around, I should say, is seemingly spiraled out of control. Lightning's going to be used anyway. Final five lives. There's a grab slam, though. 12 v 5. This could either be one of the most epic comebacks you've ever seen, or, you know, not. I mean, I was getting, well, if they get a good break, like maybe, and then Bance and Brack each get a gill apiece. You got a 3 v 11. And well, they get the job done. Maybe you're hoping Lucky can make a, a big play with the War Machine if he can earn it. But he's just finding for a kill. The double challenge is there. That is all she wrote. Denial with two in a row. In the series, at least, the s and now, of course, the control, the ferociousness on Arsenal. And honestly, it literally just comes down to that moment. That moment in round number one where there was .2 on the clock. Yeah. And if they shut him down, Brack doesn't get streaks. Heretics goes up 1-0. Instead, it was worst case scenario. You give up a set of streaks. Alex then earns some more at the start of the next round. And it's just tough to deal with. Yeah, very, very tough indeed. And that's why Denial now find themselves 2-1 up. After the first hard point, though, I think we were kind of looking at each other saying, OK, Heretics just ran through Denial. Not really too sure what to expect from them. But a great bounce back from Denial. Obviously, game two. Really in control from, from the beginning and, and game three. 0.2 seconds was all they needed. Brack took full advantage of it. They now sit 2-1 up in the series. We head over to another hard point, which if I'm honest, Chats, I don't think it's going to be like game one. Do you remember what map was? Was it Gridlock? Gridlock was game one, yeah. Well, what, ah, what was map four? Uh, Hacienda. Hacienda? Hacienda four and five. Okay. Wow, I, I actually feel... remember. So that's got to be like a first, because normally I ask you that, and you're always the, the memory one. I never well, I think for that specific question of what map is it, I lie like 80% of the time. Oh. I just guess. Unless I have it written down like beforehand. But you're pretty good at guessing. But this, yeah. Odds are normally works out. But either, either way, not just the hard point. I think Rated on Twitter called this one a must win for them, because they're 5-10 really? and 10 right now in the uh, league. And it's not just wins for confidence, which after you place top 16, you <laughs> need to like get over the hump. You need to start putting things together just a little bit. It's nice. But at the same time, you want to get to the top four. And five and 10 isn't great, but the teams that are above them, some of them might be a little bit shaky. If you get this win over Heretics, Heretics before their series yesterday had lost like five in a row. So things maybe, you know, obviously I have faith in Heretics, but you never know, maybe some cracks in the surface. There were cracks in the surface for Spice, obviously. Right. They're switching things up as well. So a couple of the teams that are above you may be starting to slip up just a little bit. And if you just go on a run, there's still a lot of potential for Denial to shoot up in these rankings. It's never over till it's over, right? You have this week, then you have it's your like cross division seven matches play. left for them to play. You can, you can make something crazy happen. You can finish in that top four. Yes, you might 
reached that point of relying on other teams to slip and other teams to fall. But we say it every year, right? Oh, well, when you're relying on that, it's not, you know, it's never always going to happen. But yet every year, it seems like somebody does make mistakes and slips away from what seems like a unlosable situation. And I mean, theoretically, it's not even you don't have to wait for someone else to make a mistake. You're playing all of these teams. That's, and if you beat yeah. them, it knocks them down. And if you win seven in a row, like they're only down two games from being top four. It's just the problem is there's three teams above them who also have their fate in their own hands. But you talk about an opening break, you talk about Hacienda. Well, it doesn't even matter where the kills go sometimes, because as you can see, it's very tough to get inside the hill. And once you're there, it's tough to stay alive. Yeah, it's pretty hard to stay alive, actually. You're absolutely right about that one. That's why you see teams really just try and fight for the spawns. If you spawn on garage side, you just want to lock it down. Nice shots from Brack. He finds Lucky. And Alex actually in the hill already. Double nade in the control. That one not going to be as good. Has stayed alive, though, to his credit. So he might start working towards some streaks, maybe. We'll see if he stays alive on this rotation. Brack is also working on some of his own. 225. Joe is just spawned out in Narnia, and honestly, if you're bragging, you can just wait for the EKA to clean up. That should give them information that there's at least one player from Heretics back at Statue. There is. That's medals. He has to stay alive, but now you're just 75 points away from streaks, and the man who did it in Game 3 does it again here in Game 4 after just one hard point. Yeah, maybe he needed an extra bullet to, to get the Hellstorm in the player at the end, but they do shut him down, so Heretics at the very least do a, a nice job on the early rotation to try to get control. They're having a lot of problems just solidifying it. This has been a ton of contest time on Lambo, and you can see that kill feed denial. Despite the, the rough spawns that they're getting, well, they've done okay, but Metal Spines too. And now they get a little bit of clearance on the hill. Yep, it should be at least a little bit of control, as you say. We have to really worry about the lightning that Breck has. You'll more than likely see that on a rotation towards fences. I'd be surprised I really used it anywhere else, but we'll see. We shall see. 10 seconds of scrap left. Heretics up 43 to 25. So great. He's going to begin all the scrap now. It's about that rotation. Rated's already found two. And all these kills, so, so important for Denial. It's going to force Heretics so far away from the new hill. Method sick with that kill is just uh, so big because Brack grabs back. It's like Method sick, but Lucky's already there with the, the Maddox in hand. Now you got a bunch of players coming in one by one, and they fall one by one. Lucky the last man up. That is a situation where Heretics, they try to force the back spawns. And then the, the bait and switch not quite on point. So Denial able to get a fair bit of time, potentially to tie it up and even take the lead. Of course, the question is, is how long they control for but that kill feed on this hill. It has been heavily in Denial's favor. Lucky the last man alive. And well, if he can't, if his teammates aren't going to bait for him the first time, he'll just kill everyone the second. Yep, works out pretty well there as he finds three. Now you still do have that lightning again to worry about, but with 15 seconds left, not going to see it here. More importantly for Heretics, Lucky is starting to work on some streaks of his own. Just somehow managed to punch behind him. They'll take it though. 250 what he needs. 66, 53. Close game. Heretics with a very marginal lead. He's trusting his teammates here. Lucky's going all the way around. You can already see Joe. That's going to be his responsibility. And Joe just takes him out instantly. You talk about flanks. There is no man more of an expert than the great Joe Pennington himself. So he does shut him down in denial. This is a, a couple hills in a row where they've done a fairly decent job. And even sitting on the lightning shock, not, not forced to burn it out quite yet. Of course, though, you see the attack. Journey is able to find a couple, and they're right back inside. And it might be time to invest that lightning. 30 seconds on this hill before we go back over towards P1. You called it. There it is. Drops from the sky. Hit marker. I believe it was Joe that actually cleaned up that kill. So. Doesn't have a massive effect in terms of the kills, but as it stands, the are back in the hill. 15 seconds left. This is enough to see a lead change. But more importantly, it's Alex's turn now to get close to streaks. He does have the Tech 5 boost, so he finds one kill. He may just pop it straight off the rip, trying to get closer, and the juggle would be enough. Doesn't even need to pop it for the streaks. Gets the lightning himself, thanks to the EKA that came through. Now he has the health, so after popping the Tech 5, more streaks for Heretics to worry about. This really has been, like, this entire series outside of the first map, the, the Brack and Alex show. Yes. Anything you can do, I can do better. It is back-to-back -back streaks in the Harpoon. It was back-to-back -back streaks in the Control. And then I don't, they never got streaks in the Search and Destroy, but they both had fantastic games. Both were an inch away from earning their specialist if they didn't outright get them. And all, all said and done, they're still down by 10 points. Which is a little crazy. Think about that's just how well Heretics was able to hold the hill when they've actually been inside the hill. So credit to them, but 
The lead change now comes through. So now looking to pick up the scrap. Sukri's rotated already. Now he just needs his teammates to make sure that they can get there alive. So Brack, not going to get rechallenged there. Just have to make sure that these following gunfights are, are won. You're really looking at the players right at the very back, but keep your eye on number four. It's rated. It's managed to get all the way back statue, and I don't think Sukri saw him cross. Sukri could be in a whole different world of pain here if rated peaks at the right time. Rated might just be a little bit slow enough that he gets shot in the back and you can see though the lightning strike gets used from denial pick up a couple They break inside the hill. You can hear the war machine coming out from lucky though Heretics trying to do everything they got. Yep, Alex is forced to use the health home as well As it says heretics still with the lead. We'll send over to an Astro Gaming listening with heretics <laughs> Tengo un trofeo, tengo yo, para la vida. Me voy a pegar, no me lo voy a pegar. Me 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 voy a pegar. Ya, ya, pero está con la espalda de espalda. Me tiro el tempest de cara, me tiro el tempest de cara. ¡Cuatro pozo, cuatro pozo! Uno, dos y cuatro pozo. Sí, sí, van tres de frente, van tres de frente. Tienen pepos ellos, eh. Tienen pepos, uno. Oh, te dio un tiro. Porche mío, porche mío, porche mío, porche mío, chale. Dos de cara, dos a la izquierda, Pens. Porche nada, porche nada. Van a entrar al almacén. No, no, tengo las púas aún, tengo las púas. Gracias, 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 gracias. 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 Doble, tiro, doble, doble, doble. Me mata la ICR lejos, ICR lejos. Ah, aquí, doble, 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 punto, punto, punto. Son dos, ICR, punto ICR. Aguanta, aguanta, aguanta. Los dos tocados, los dos tocados. Rachas, rate, de que sale. Rate, va por rachas, punto. Por el chale. Yo, yo, dentro. Vale, también. Cuidado ahora, no empecemos a ir de uno, que están los cinco en el punto. Salgo detrás. Están los dos un tiro en el punto y uno por rachas. Yo voy a ir a por rachas. Son cuatro, Tim. Pushear uno arriba, Porsche. Arriba, Porsche, pa' pecera. Sí, pecera, pecera, vamos rachas, vamos rachas todos, hay que hacer kills, ¿vale? Están pecerados, 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 un arriba, un arriba, un arriba, un arriba, un arriba, un arriba, rotar, 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 acopo, 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 doble, yo, te meto al lambo, vete al lambo, hay uno ya a punto, creo, aguanta mejor, hay uno arriba azul, hay uno arriba azul, creo, alto, vale, arriba azul, arriba azul, 143, 124, Heretic still with an advantage, they say you can take your streaks, you can take your kill advantage, it doesn't matter, Heretic have fought their way back in, and now it's Metals with the grab slam, he's lining it up, getting ready for it. Now should know he has it. You cannot body stack. This is going to be the play right here for Metals. The slam gives him three. He was roaring before it even connected. Oh, those, that's the sweetest feeling when you don't get shot as soon as you come over and you're like, I can I got it the whole way, dude. It just, you just salivate at those moments. But I think you caught it correctly, even though Denial is fighting back once again. It's been seemingly, Heretics has just increased the lead. Like every hill, they'll get, let's say, 30 seconds. Denial fights back, but then Denial only manages to get 20 or 25. So they kept, they repeatedly are keeping it close, but never enough to actually break through. Because you can see Denial used Bants. They got double kill with the Grass Slam. 10 seconds later, Heretics right back inside. Heretics, just better teamwork in the hard points. That's how it feels. 180, 137, last rotation of hills. Journey. Working towards some streaks, if we can sniff out maybe a couple more players and get some hill time. Beautiful shots. We'll drop. Heretic still inside the hill. And again, this spawn's going to be massive. Now you look about, all right, well, the game is not going to be one here, but could be maybe one on P2. So what is available for both teams? Joe is just teetering on, on the edge of his vision pulse. A couple more kills for him. Alex is going to get his attack five boost. Method 6 not too far away from his vision pulse either. Lucky, he's got his war machine though, and that could be a massive, massive factor. And they're just getting... The, I, I feel like the Maddox has been such a huge proponent of Heretic success, just like the gun in general, because it seems like so often, even in this game, just double kills left and right with that gun specifically. But either way, when all is said and done, you're going to have to start burning the specialist. You desperately need Joe to earn that vision pulse. You're going to need a big play out of Brack with the war machine. and. Well, Method sick in the back on the rotation. He can find one. He's kind of trapped in between Denial's players, but he's keeping them at bay, buying his team time to come help him out just a little bit. He's going to fall. Reinforcements are here. Question is, how much damage are you going to do? It looks like Journey. Well, the Maddox able to find a double kill. Lucky in the back. He takes one down with him. And now, again, pressure's on for Brack. you got to make a big play with the War Machine. Bands left out high and dry. Division and War Machine for, for both teams about to come through. In fact, Method Six actually used his. He's earned it before Joe. So, as it stands, Lucky knows exactly where everyone is, but the War Machine is out on the other side. Bance will drop. In fact, no, it isn't out yet. 
Rack hasn't invested Ethel for a moment there. He, he had instead not going to yet. Heretics can win on this hill. Yeah, it looks like they're going to. You got the vision pulse coming in from Jaw on the other side, but the kill feed you can see. Maybe not make too much of a difference. Joe can find two, but Raiden's the last man over. And okay, they stabilized. They did their job. He needed two separate double kills. A potential issue is the rotation. Alex might actually be the first one here. He's got the TAC-5, and honestly, you're going to have to use it. It's Heretics. They're going to be very close. He might just fall to the trades. He's trying to find kills if he can get them. He gets shut down. The TAC-5 doesn't get called in, and Heretics, well, five seconds away. The game is theirs. Brack trying to use the War Machine. Now, Flak Jacket on. Heretics' game is there's tying the series up at two to two and Ben we got ourselves a game five remember when I said I didn't think this was one that was gonna go game five that was wrong we're going the distance we thought that denial was gonna have the momentum from that control not the case heretics our point has been on point today despite giving away so many streaks early it looked as if this was done and dusted it isn't you go to that game five search and destroy the now one game two will it be a repeat we'll find out after this First game of the day, first game five of the day. Heretics send us the distance and chance game fives and heretics, or they're, they're not too uh, too afraid of them, are they? Not too shabby. And they experience them quite a bit. They've 11 game fives on the year. Keep in mind that includes the, the PLQ, mm -hmm. eight and three overall. Pretty decent record, pretty decent record. Uh, in terms of the losses, do you remember who the, the losses came to? You remember how I just told you exactly yeah. where when I was looking at my phone? Uh -huh. That was 10 seconds ago. One was, one was E6. One was to Genji. So E6 at the Pro League last week. Yep. Genji 
Was it at the Pro League or was it an event? Genji was an event. No, it was in a Pro... No, 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 it was in pool play. It was pool, pool play. play at Fort Worth. Professional. What was the last one? I don't know. You're the, you're the wizard. Oh, Envy. Envy at the PLQ. Uh, and it was the old Envy squad at the PLQ. Okay, so they've lost the game five to a team that no longer exists in a series that, in terms of them making the Pro League, well, they're here, obviously didn't make a difference. <laughs> they lost to Genji in a game five. I'm pretty sure that was when Genji just didn't lose search anymore. They just decided that they were going to win 11 in a row or whatever absurd thing they put up. So understandable to lose a game five in that situation. And then I already forgot what the last one was again. E6. 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 Last but week. they also beat E6 Woo! in the game five as well. In the first set of the Pro League when E6 yes. was obviously a different team. So they're one on one against E6 specifically. More fun facts about Heretics. Yeah. They're one of, well, I would say four, but it's really one of like two teams now that they've kept the same roster, roster. from the start of the year. Yep. You think they keep the same roster throughout the rest of the year? Is it? It's them and Optic, right? Well, Optic technically. I mean, they they had Zuma for that like thirty doesn't seconds, count. which doesn't count. It doesn't count. But at the same time, I think LG and Splice. I mean, they're just that's technically the same thing. Right? I mean, technically, right, we, we know they're that. Done. Done. Technically, we the know thing. they're done though. Like, there, there's no chance of of anything happening with Optic Gaming right now. That's for sure. But do you think Heretics do keep their same roster for the rest of the year? You've got one more chance to to change. Well, I think we both know that my knowledge and depth definitely goes to knowing what the oh, deep the Spanish amateur team is, right? Yeah. No, I don't expect them to make a change. Really? But I'm coming at this with having zero knowledge of that side of the world. Well, not zero knowledge, but very little in comparison, because I think, again, Heretics is even one of the teams that they just skirm over there all the time. Right. So I have no idea what they've seen. I'm not expecting it, though. I would be surprised if they did, because they've been playing together forever. They got top eight two tournaments ago. They got top six at the last tournament. Things are looking up. Yeah. I wouldn't change roles either. You know, my two cents. <laughs> Try telling that to them. Round number one, already bummed down. So now on the attack. Still haven't seen the first blood. Rated. Just crocodile. In the spot. Because apparently, you know, Brack can just hit fire and heal at the same time and still be incredibly accurate. But the rest of his team cannot do that. It's 4v1. You know the difference between a crocodile and an alligator, Ben? The alligators get the kills. You said he was crocodiling, and that's why Raided falls in the gunfight. Heretics, an overwhelming return on this B site to get the defuse. And if you talk about maps, the Heretics might be comfortable on in search. Oh, here we go. Hacienda is towards the top of the list. Why is that, Chance? They're really good at the map. <laughs> You're expecting, like, oh, because it's in Spain. No, they're just good at the map to play it all the time. Good. Lucky snipes on Hacienda. Well, I mean, a lot of people snipe on Hacienda now. <laughs> he snipes, like, different. How's Snipes mid map, you know, you, there's a certain uh, number of premium spots. He'll mix it up angles. a little bit more. More off angles, slightly more unique looks, of course. The deeper we've gone in the year, more teams and more snipers have shown us different stuff. But at least towards the start, he was very unique. And he's still a, a special butterfly. Heretics. 1 0 up. Good retake from them. Down now on the attacking side. We'll see what is going to be their show. Oh, this again. Lucky hops in the water. Who was, was it? Was it I Frosty? It was E6. No, it was... Someone on E6 for sure. No, it was uh, Accelerate back in the day. I think it was M. Ruiz that used to pull it out. Are you sure? Maybe it was Maybe it was Cade. Ooh. I know we've seen it twice. That's it. But either way. Definitely different. Definitely different. 5v3. So now with the advantage. Bomb over towards A. No one massively close to streak, so I'm curious to see if they even want to try and put the bomb down. 40 seconds left. No, not going to be the case. Instead, running around the rosy, running around the map in this sense. Brax still over towards B. Will be the first and our player to sniff out Heretic's plan here. Did he spot him? Well, that well, he sees him now. Team kill is enough. 4v2. Jenny is on the site. The stun available. There's two different players there. He's going to slide out. He's going to spot them both now. Too late. Denial. Win the round. That was good positioning towards the end. Raiden, instead of body sacking with his teammate, slides out just a little bit. So when the challenge comes in, you guarantee at least a trade. But of course, the, the round was over just from the, the first two opening picks. You see the, the fashionable site getting used in the water, but of course, didn't make too much of a difference towards the end. Square. 1-1. One, one. Was it E6 that did it? I think you might be right. But I, I, I could have sworn at some point I saw Emery really easy. I, I know two different people have done it. Okay. So, well, now three. It's just not really very common. 
Normally it's the, the thermal that you see more so than anything else. Speaking of which, there's the thermal pally for you, lucky. Makes his way back over towards fences. Nothing on the outer side just yet. Teammates do have at least a little bit of control. Sucrete won't find it now. Lucky in the pistol. Name about a duo of this series. Nade out. Retake already looking great. There's two players, three players that fall. 3v1. Track all by himself. Somehow wins the first fight. Somehow stays alive. If he checks bomb, he's going to find the second. That's so unfortunate out of ammo. Could have maybe, maybe had a chance of winning that round. Uh, maybe. maybe. He was probably dead because he didn't have the time to get the heal maybe. or get the kill and heal. But yeah, maybe like that. <laughs> he, he made the perfect play. Yeah, for the situation he was dealt, he made the perfect play. The problem was, honestly, it's just the cluster nade. You throw the cluster nade inside a connector, you see it forces two players out, and there's just nothing you can really do in that situation other than play around the cluster nade. And all well, that is a nice bounce back. And of course, the first blood for heretics does sort of help things out. You know what Paladin in Spanish is? Paladin Boomstick. <laughs> no, okay, I have no idea. <laughs> That's actually a good question. Do you, they, I mean, they play the American version when they're here, so it's a slightly different game. You think like the first time they did it, they had trouble like making classes? Like, oh, no, no, not at all. Okay. No, I just <laughs> there's pictures of everything. It's different though, Ben. <laughs> it's in Spanish. <laughs> sure. Lucky's like having to teach him. <laughs> this is <laughs> the little post-it note translating for him. This is the Maddox still, or. <laughs> Well, Heretic's still with the advantage here. For how long, though? Benz was able to shut down one on the push over towards eight. That was about it. So 4v2 now. Down to Alex and Brack. A pretty good old series. Brack's already six and three, by the way. Now, the A retake. There was two people alive on Denial to clutch a 2v4. You'd want these two to be the players alive. Already tagged up. Try to go for the ninja. Five health has to wait to heal. The nade is available to use. And considering Brax used his, you might see it being cooked any second now. Instead, he wants to go for the challenge the old fashioned way. 1v1. Doesn't matter. Journey kept his distance. And let him know. You're in the background screaming out dead just in case anybody did not witness it. And heretics again on Hacienda, which, by the way, Spanish for Hacienda is Hacienda. So, like, they're clearly. Well orchestrated on the map. They're at home. They're comfortable. They're at home. Yeah. This is the one thing they know for a fact when the map loads in. They're like, we played this one before. <laughs> Everyone other they're not too sure until they see the pictures, but they read Hacienda and they know. I wonder if they get... I guess you couldn't get the English versions over there, no. I don't know. Wait, why? You realize you can just also change the language in the game, right? You are aware that that is the setting. Can you actually? Yeah. Wait, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, I don't know. Well, no, Ben, if you remind me after, there, there's actually an interesting point to this entire language debacle. I, I'm, You know, I'm, Chance, I'm, I'm sure there is. And it has to do with the Japanese, actually. <laughs> Which I know seems, like, ridiculous, but that's true. By the way, in this round, no first blood's coming in. We'll focus on the COD. I know gameplay is important. I'm trying to get the bomb down and lucky. Well, you spot out information, but I don't think they know the guy's there. Actually, they find out. Benton Sick mid-map was open, apparently. He's able to pick up a couple of the trays are here, though. All of a sudden, 2v2. Method Sick and Journey have clearance towards the bomb, but now they have no information on where Raided and Brack are, so trying to hunt him down, and, well, Brack just gets amazing timing. Godlike timing. It's been spotted, though. Now it's just sniffing out Rated. So the back and Rated wins his 1v1. That should be enough to seal the deal. Brack just making sure that player was dead. All he had to do there was Rated winning his 1v back Lambo. The round really secured. Good one from Denial. Keeping it close. This white heretics really looking, so far at least, the better team. I will say, though, that's, you know, rated with the ICR, picking up a big gunfighter against a guy with the SOG when you're a couple feet away from him. Granted, Brack wins his 1v1, and there's not a lot of time, but some big kills coming in from the side of Denial, who obviously we saw in the first search in Destroy. They're very solid and capable of going on a run because. Oh, Brack halfway to that war machine. Eight and four again. It's he has not slowed down. It's insane just how good he is, but a first blood there will nullify his effect on this round. 
Up steps Joe. Shuts down Journey. The sub 4v3. Denial with the man advantage. That's the, the benefit of the bait. You get that top hallway control. Joe knows he has full clearance to go full speed ahead. Finds a pick, and well, now you have that man advantage. And Heretics again. They got to debate whether or not they even want to try to get the bomb down. Do you try to make a play? The RK7 again gets the one on one. Medals there for the trade. The 4v3. Well, instantly turned around, and now just like that, Bant's almost found two, but 2v2 bomb planted. Alex is here quick. He knows both players are on the fences. He gets challenged up top. He tries to stay alive. Can Bant get the trade? A little bit too slow to get there. And now this is just such a difficult spot. 33 seconds. He's thought about the nade twice this round. Now it might be a little late. If he'd pulled the trigger a little earlier. It might have worked out in his favor. Not getting flanked. Time's ticking though, 20 seconds. Method 6 still there. So yeah, good place nade could maybe cause problems, but with 12 seconds left, this is done. This is over. Heretics are not gonna give this one away. 4-2 for the Spanish. Their game five record throughout the year, eight and three, looking to make it nine and three following this game. It was kind of funny, the story of the round as well. Denial had the advantage because of the top hallway control early on. Joe flows th or flies through. They already got the first blood, the trades. Then he gets the next one. And then it was top hallway control that they left open. It was Lucky that comes through with a pistol. It gets the kill on Raided. And then medals from the other hallway get the trade. And it's just that instantaneous flip. Heretics feeling passionate on the main stage. Joe, one and five. That was his first kill last round that we saw. Now still with a good chance. This is one of those massive rounds though. And search and destroy. And definitely in game five, so you do not want to let Heretics go up to five. And Joe will get the bomb down. So we'll force Heretics to come to him. And Brack got spotted though. He, he's gonna get shot in the back. Lucky just somehow playing a nice spot, gets that information. So first blood Heretics, time not quite on their side. Bunch of players in connector. You see Method Sick, they're pouring on the pressure. They're making their move. Rated able to find one. 4v4. The trap, though, is set. And now both these players just in connector area. Metals hops on bomb. You got to fly through. You got to hope someone can make the trades. Alex gets red. You got to force it through to kill the guy at bomb, but too late. And again, Heretics, they just overwhelm at the site. They've done it at B. Now they do it at A. And they are feeling comfortable, Ben, on Hacienda. I'm looking real good too. Real good. Really, Joe, you can take your best plate. Doesn't really matter. Still lost the round anyway. Heretics. Match. Point. 5 2. Big advantage for them. Of course, it was a couple of games yesterday we spoke about earlier on in game two where they were 5 1 up, let one slip, didn't let the second. Be very surprised if this one is. Let through their grasp. To now with a lot of work to do. There it is. Heretics on the attacking side. Journey just slid out. Wanted to make sure that his teammates A-OK. -okay. Bomb is down. 5v5 retake. Good luck. Have fun, Denali Sports. And they're out for free. Now you just gotta hope you can kind of find a pick. You got who number nine up top, Sukri playing a he's just waiting for it. He's waiting for the pressure to come in and oh he's actually top hallway. I thought he was in the office, but doesn't make a difference. Journey's there to find two. Gets shot in the back, but his job is done. Metals is finding kills. He got a 4v2, 22 seconds. Now he's got to hop on bomb. Rated doing what he can, but he gets overwhelmed. Brack, the final man to make the big play. There's the second one. But now you got to get on the bomb, and he's just going to commit. But you can see Lucky. He knows the deal. Heretics, an 8 and 3 record in game fives. Well, make it 9 and 3, Ben. On the year, Clutch has been on their side, and they do it once again. Brack will find the kill, but it's. For nothing but stats. Denial will lose the game five, search and destroy. Heretics, of course, will take that dub. A wonderful performance from them. Another game five win for them on the year. Truly an impressive stuff in terms of just their consistency on winning them. Makes you think, I wonder how many of those, uh, this would be an interesting stat, how many of those have been on Hacienda? That would be a stat that I would actually love to, to go back and see. Three, but you're lying. No, double check me. Damn, maybe you're right. Yeah. You said it with your chest tonight. They're 9 and 3, 3 the ones are on Hacienda. All right, fair enough. I believe that, 53%. Two are on frequency, one was on gridlock, and the other four payload.
Does that math check out? That math does not check that out. That math is nowhere near right. I also don't know how many times I've seen Heretics play Payload. Maybe more than three. I have no idea. You're okay. Well, thank you very much for, for, for that. I'm curious. I'm here to help. Let, later on today, I'm going to ask you about the the Japanese and the communication thing. Yeah, ask me in like 30 we, seconds. Yeah, we, we, we don't have time for it right now because thank we're going to send it over to uh, Maven on the desk with our analyst guys. What do you think? Thank you, gentlemen. And yeah, that is something I remember from their first leg. When, uh, they had so many game fives. A lot of time was coming down to Hacienda. That is their best search and destroy. I believe they're at nine and five now on Hacienda. So it's been their best throughout the year. But before we talk about the search and destroy, Study, I want to start with you. They were, what, one and eight respawn coming in before their last couple of series. They've now won four hard points in a row. What's starting to click for Heretics? Metals and Lucky are putting on absolute all-star performances. Even in that fourth map, Metals didn't really have a good map, but I'm pretty sure Lucky was 32 and 23 at a point. They're just able to keep up their consistent slaying, at least out of two all-stars that they have on this team. Journey has been playing average, if you ask me, but Method is sick, the player who we've just been always talking about. He's just been so inconsistent for this team in general for all their losses. But in the last two series, he's been definitely holding his part. Anemos, is this starting to look like the a team that can get another top six, top eight in a major tournament. Yes, this reminds me of the, the heretics that we see in those brackets at the last two tournaments. You know, in pool play, they start a little bit slow and they have these ups and downs, but when they put it together, they can ride that wave for, you know, a decent amount of time. And it seems like they're finally figuring out their hard point once again, as they've won the last four. And they can rely on that game five because they're a decent search and destroy team. And they have that good sniper as well. I think that switching methods like to assault and then taking away the grapple from him has made him a lot better. Like he, he was giving away his life a lot before with the grapple. Sometimes you see grapple players over bait, and now Method is actually playing on pace with his team, so he's not like putting up those point sixes or whatever, and it's helping his team a lot in the hard points. They're winning every single rotation. They're winning most of their gunfights. They look really strong in that game mode. In terms of open vent, they just have to make sure they can win controls. Right now, their control is looking sloppy, but going forward, they at least have something that they know they can work on so they can win some of those tougher matches. They just tougher. need to become a little bit more consistent. They always start off these open events so slow and then have to make some, you know, waves in, in the brackets. So I'm looking at Heretics to just keep this up, right? Like keep building upon this hard point because we even yesterday, these two hard points are great, but even yesterday in that game one, they made a mistake that almost cost them that first map. So it's like they still have a lot to work on, but it does look immensely better than did last week. Yeah, they're starting to improve in an area that they really, really struggled. I heard Chance kind of talk about the fact that they've been really good in the game five, in the clutch, whether it's been Hacienda or different maps. Do you think there's anything about the composition of this team that's allowed to come up so clutch study hype uh, it's definitely the energy, the energy <laughs> side. like sucre every time he gets a kill he's just yelling at people like even before <laughs> the round was even done right there they already knew the game was won and all of them just start yelling they put their headsets down they just have so much passion it's all about the bombos these guys bring all this different energy into the venue they're like elevating the way but it's just in spanish like they lost it a little it's like, like the vamos a little bit and now it's back like yeah. not there when the vamos hard is because point. hard points is, is what gives you that energy right like when you're gunning people you're like let's go vamos and then they start dominating <laughs> So I think that's it's kind of back for them, and it's nice to see. Well, we're going to see if they can keep it going, because I think they're one of the, like, when we start talking about it, I know we're going to have trading shots episodes, pop mic episodes, and talking kind of about dark horses to maybe make a run. Pac-Man, they still kind of fall in that category for you. Dark yeah, I mean, not in terms of winning the actual event. I don't think that they're going to win the event, to be fair, but they are a team that I do believe can beat any team at any given moment. Like, if they find that moment against 100 Thieves at a tournament, they can win that match. They won't win the tournament, but they are. What's they the are highest? Enough. What's the highest finish you think they're capable of? I can see them getting top four, top three, like a reciprocity, like Fort Worth type thing. Right. If, okay. they, if they, they, they hit fire at the right moment, they can get they can get really far. Winning the tournament is just so hard. It's just, it it's, just it's just so hard to do it, nowadays. It depends on their bracket, their group. Because you look at them, they're not winning two hard points against United. They're not winning two hard points against 100 Thieves you or think. Optics. So, yeah. Well, okay. more than likely, yeah. All right. Well, that's going to do it, at least for the breakdown of our previous match. I do want to take a look at the schedule as we still have three more matches to come. Coming up next is going to be Elevate E United. We still have got Enigma 6 versus 100 Thieves and Team Envy versus Splice to wrap up the night. And for this next matchup, Pac-Man, I, I know I'm trading shots. I was picking Elevate. You took E United. You said I was a crazy person. You picked person. Elevate? Elevate. I, 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 listen, I'm not you, highly that's intelligent. Did you watch what E United? I know. I know. But guys, that is next. Elevate E United. We'll be right back after the break.